Hello everyone and welcome to Momentum channel. Today we are going to start with the basics. We're going to take a look at how you can research the companies before you pull the trigger and uh, buy a company uh, through the stock market. Uh, we're going to take a look at the Toronto Stock Exchange as some of the examples, look up into a different number of companies and show you how you can apply fundamental analysis as you decide whether you're going to purchase a company or not. I hope you find this video of value. But before we get started, let's take a quick peek at the latest status of my passive income portfolio that I have with Wealthsimple, currently sitting at 42,000 um, Canadian dollars. Uh, this portfolio has been performing fairly well in the past uh, several months, particularly in the past months, you can see how this portfolio has grown uh, dramatically, which allows me to gain more dividend income while maintaining a healthy growth in terms of appreciation of the stock values. All right, so let's dive into how you can research your companies in the Toronto Stock Exchange. The website that I use for this purpose is called exdividend.ca. As you type in the exdividend.ca, you will be landing on this page that you can see here on the screen. There are a number of options and filters here, so um, don't get uh, distracted or overwhelmed. I'm going to walk you through different options and the ones that I find most helpful and easy to use for you as you research your intended company in TSX. At the top left corner, there are a couple of options. So you could uh, first filter companies by the ones that have an upcoming dividend payment. So if that option is selected here, you could notice that there are 480 dividend stocks found that are, have some upcoming dividend paid out. And they are listed for you here um, based on their ex-dividend date. Uh, for those of you who might not be familiar, the ex-dividend date is the date that determines uh, whether you are going to be qualified to receive a dividend or not. If you're a stockholder of a company before the ex-dividend date, you're eligible to receive that dividend uh, that is coming up. Whereas if you buy that stock on the ex-dividend date or after, you're not gonna be eligible for the upcoming dividend payout. Take a look, there are a couple of details provided. What's this code or symbol for the company, the company description and name, the ex-dividend date and payable dates for the dividend. The yield is very important. The yield tells you what is the dividend percent for the company. Say if a company pays a 5.11% dividend, uh, that's a fairly decent uh, dividend amount that they pay. You could also see what's the frequency of the payment for dividend. So in this case, for a company called Olympia Financial Group Incorporated, OLY, they are paying a monthly uh, dividend and the dividend yield currently is at 5.11%. You could see how much is their upcoming dividend in Canadian dollars. What is the PE ratio? So the PE ratio stands for the price to earning ratio. This ratio can differ depending on the industry that you're um, dealing with. But typically speaking, a PE ratio under 20 suggests a reasonable PE ratio, whereas if you get uh, anything beyond PE uh, ratio of 20, that might be a little bit overvalued uh, type of stock. Again, keep in mind that this might differ uh, depending on the industry. So it's always wise as you're looking into a company, compare them to similar type of companies within their same sector and same industry to get, get a good idea of whether the, that P ratio is reasonable or not. You also get other details such as the last price of the stock, the market capitalization for uh, that stock, the volume of the stock, as well as the range, price range within the past uh, 52 weeks, what has been the 52 week high and the 52 week low. There are other options that you could uh, start looking into your stock. So let's say if you're interested in um, searching the stocks by their yield or dividend percent. Let's say if you're interested in dividend pay down, payment of between three to four percent. If you select those options and select find dividend, the page starts to get refreshed for you and now you're uh, left with 243 dividends. You're able to click on any of these columns and that way it's going to sort the details for you based on uh, the details of that column. So say within this existing 243 companies, I'm interested in the highest yield. So if I click on it and start one more time, starting from the high to low, you could see uh, the list here. 
For the purpose of this video, I thought maybe we could look into a number of banks here in Canada and compare them so that we get a good idea how we could use this tool in order for us to do fundamental analysis and compare different stocks. So let's get into it. To do that, I click on option by company slash symbol and start looking for one of the companies that I have in mind. So one of the largest banks here in Canada is the Royal Bank. So I'm just going to type in Royal Bank. You can see it starts populating and I click on Royal Bank and find dividends. There you have it. We have RY, Royal Bank of Canada. The yield is currently at 3.87%, pays out dividends quarterly, and the next dividend amount would be $1.05. And the PE ratio for this bank is at 12.3 at this moment. I'm going to select this company and then click on compare. This way, the system knows that I would like to add it to portfolio for me to compare it to other stocks that I'm going to look up. The next stock that I'm going to look up would be the Toronto Dominion, Dominion Company. That's again, TD Bank is uh, one of the very popular companies here in Canada, one of the popular banks. There you have it. The yield is at 3.93%. I'm going to select it and add it again to my comparison list. Next, I'm going to search for the other bank, Nova Scotia, Bank of Nova Scotia. Again, it's a popular bank here. Again, for us, uh, adding it to our comparison list here, you have a yield of 4.8%. So again, these are some of your biggest banks you have in Canada. And of course, let's not forget Bank of Montreal or BMO with a yield of 4.16%. Let's add that to our comparison. One other bank that I'm going to add to the list, and this is a company and the bank that I personally own. This is a smaller bank, of course, and many of you may not may have not even heard about it. The reason that I bought into this company is because of their high dividend yield and their uh, fairly lower PE ratio. So it's called Laurentian Bank. Laurentian Bank of Canada, ticker symbol LB. Let's find that. Yes, you can see it has a much higher yield of 6.11% and the PE ratio is currently sitting at 11.6, I believe. So uh, there you have it. Here's a list of different banks that we can take a closer look at and start doing our fundamental analysis and compare them. If we sort them by yield, you can see that the highest yield here among this batch belongs to the Laurentian Bank, followed by Bank of Nova Scotia and Bank of Montreal. They all pay you a dividend on a quarterly basis at the moment. In terms of the PE ratio, if we kind of sort it out by that, the lowest uh, here PE ratio belongs to Bank of Nova Scotia followed by Laurentian Bank. As for the last price, the lowest priced uh, stock here in this batch is Laurentian Bank with $43.80, uh, the last price. In terms of their, where does this price sits within the 40, 52 week, you can see that it's a little bit closer, halfway there, but it's closer to the 50 week low. Whereas for Bank of Nova Scotia, the current price of $74.73 is much closer to your 52 week high. Usually, uh, and personally, this is uh, the way that I approach it, I tend to uh, be a little bit cautious if I see a stock that the price of it is closer to its 52 week high, that just tells me that um, this stock is has had a good run and it's getting closer to its all-time highs, at least within the past 52 week. That being said, it doesn't mean that the stock does not have op the option to break out and you know surpass its 52 week high. It's just a little bit of a riskier option uh, personally. So I tend to be a little more cautious uh, when I see that. If it's still a stock is closer to its 52 week low, that doesn't necessarily indicate that that's a great buy because you still have to look into uh, the reason behind why the stock price is uh, lower. Has there been any maybe recent announcement, any uh, particular announcement about this company or stock? Uh, are they performing well? What has been their recent quarter? So of course you need to do uh, a little bit of extra digging and you can find out about that simply by uh, looking up the name of the company uh, and searching them up on Google and trying to find out what are some of the news around the company uh, recently and what's happening with them. In order for you to do a deeper dive into a company and assess where they are in terms of their finances and uh, performance, I do recommend a different website called tmxmoney.com. 
Again, this is for the Toronto Stock Exchange and analyzes and provides details of uh, different companies and their stock um, in detail. As you go to this website at the top of at the top section, you could just type in the company that you're interested in. So for our example, we're going to go back again with Laurentian uh, Bank of Canada, TSX, and search for it. The details of this stock and the company and their stocks loads for us on the page. Uh, the section that I would be more interested to analyze and go to would be the financial tab. So I'm going to click on financials and scroll down where we get details of the performance of this company over the past several fiscal years. So you can see here we have the details as far as back as the fiscal year of um, ending in October 15, um, October 2016, 17, 18, and 19. Take a look here, and all of these numbers are in Canadian million dollars. So for Laurentian Bank, as you could notice, uh, in the last fiscal year, their total revenue was down compared to the year before. And it was, in fact, it was very close to uh, the one that they had back in um, fiscal year of 2017. So no wonder uh, the stock has been uh, hammered and the stock has been impacted negatively over the past uh, several uh, months and in fact over the past year if you scroll down you get a lot more details in terms of the element different elements of their revenue their expenses uh, their earning per share i'm going to go further down to take a look at their basic earning per share so the earning per share currently it sits at for the last fiscal year was at three dollars and 78 cents which was the lowest uh, of the batch in compared to the past three to four years the only uh, one here on this list that was lower lowest of all was actually back in 2015 but um, you wouldn't expect for a company to usually have a, a much lower earning per share in fact a sign of a good growing company is the fact that their earning per share should be increasing over time now let's compare this to bank of nova scotia if i click on their financials and take a look Look how much healthier the revenue growth here is for Bank of Nova Scotia and how much uh, you know, of a bigger bank in the Bank of Nova Scotia is. Because looking at their revenue, we are talking about billions here. So uh, back in October 2019, their total revenue was $30.3 billion Canadian, which shows a steady growth over the past several years. So that's, to me, a very healthy growth there, right there. You scroll down, you have details around their different expenses. Uh, the details around their earning per share is not provided in here, which is uh, surprising to me because obviously this is now a profit making definitely company. Um, so that I'm a little bit surprised by that. But if I scroll further down, net income, if you look, net income is after deducting all the different expenses involved. So here, the net income again shows a decent growth. Uh, it's lower than the 2018 fiscal year, but again, it's a decent number um, at $8.3 billion net income. So definitely some healthy numbers there for Bank of Nova Scotia. Similar approach, you could use the tmxmoney.com website here to take a look at the financials for different stocks and different companies and assess. Uh, for me, um, there are a couple of key measures and metrics that are of uh, great importance one is the revenue of the company and how it's growing over time the other one is around their expenses i don't um, would like to see a company that has uh, drastic expenses when it comes to um, you know the way that they are operating and performing um, it's reasonable for the expenses to grow over time but um, their drastic expense growth in, in terms of their expenses compared to the previous years can be some red flags the basic earning per share and the diluted earning per share are also of um, importance for us as we analyze um, the stocks for a company uh, this is just to tell you the very basics of looking up a company and comparing it to their competition and getting some good insight around their dividends. Uh, personally, I'm a big fan of dividend stocks, uh, the companies that pay you uh, monthly, quarterly, or annual dividends because that's one way that, aside from the stock appreciation, you can increase your um, wealth and generate more income for you passively. There you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it of value. If you did, please hit the like button and join Momentum channel. 
on Momentum channel, we talk about investing, finances, and personal development. Be sure to check out some of the other videos we have here on this channel. If the idea of passive investing intrigues you, be sure to check out my other videos around investing passively with Wealthsimple. I'm going to add a link in the description where you can take advantage of $10,000 managed for free through Wealthsimple as well. Thank you and have a great day.